This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. What's up, guys? This is Coach Tani from Elevate Yourself. Welcome to my coach's reaction to Kuroko No Basket episode 10. Many of you have been asking how often do I plan on posting my reaction videos? Right now, I'm currently trying to do it every other week, and I know I missed a week this time around, but it's been tough trying to juggle my daytime job, which is a high school art teacher, my coaching job, and then making all the other content for Elevate Yourself. So I'm gonna try to stick to a two week schedule, and maybe one day if I do, quit my daytime job to go full-time elevate yourself and I can do it every week. I actually am curious what the fantastical style of basketball that many of you were referring to actually looks like because so far everything's been pretty realistic so I'm actually a little bit excited to see what this flashy basketball looks like. Yes, the peach Kit Kat was incredible and for those who don't know what Polgenha is talking about. You can try your own peach Kit Kat flavors by ordering a Sakurako and Tokyo Treat box, which we'll talk about later in this video. I'm not sure if I get a San Antonio Spurs vibe, at least not yet. I still feel like the team is still forming. It is a more team-oriented basketball, but we haven't seen that yet because the two main players, Kuroko and Kagami, have been doing most of the work, but now we finally get to see the depth of the team. So maybe once I see the actual team play a little bit more. It might remind me of the Spurs, but we'll follow up with that comment maybe a few episodes from now and see if they can beat the team they're playing right now. Don't forget to check out my other Kuroko reaction videos and my Haikyuu reaction videos, link in the description box below. Now let's get this Kuroko party started. <laughs> like spider defense. Oh, I can already tell we got the good animation this episode. Oh, got his finally last foul. Oh, this is like a flashback of what happened. Because the seniors just came in to get their revenge. <laughs> I wish I could do this to my players sometimes, just rubbing my fists into their face like, what the heck are you doing? Ah, oh, look at that. So when, when the foot goes in the toe off, you got these dust specks coming off of the contact with the foot on the floor. Great way to communicate how dusty, like, you know, gym floors get dusty over time as people play on it, but to also communicate the wind from the power of the step. Like you need, you can't just do white wishes all the time, but just having that dust move helps illustrate the power of the step because it, it's it's the wind that comes from a powerful step. Look at this. Beautiful. Oh, okay. Kuroko getting physical with Kagami. Six point game, still pretty close. He still apologizes. Sorry, I'm not very strong. Oh, okay. Okay. Getting vengeance for his friend. That's a good teammate. Change my mark. Maybe it means change the person he's defending. I can't have that. I wonder what that means. This dramatic piano music makes this anime feel much more like a drama compared to Haikyuu, where it just seemed like a really fun story that you were a part of. This only means that Kuroko is somehow going to be able to beat him. Hmm, wonder what he means by that. So this is really important as a player. One thing I always teach my kids that I coach is you can't just play for yourself. 
Now, it doesn't mean that it only means you can't be a selfish player, but even if you are a selfless player, you have to find something greater to play for because there's a deeper motivation and drive that comes out of playing for your mom or your family or for your teammates or for your coaches. And one thing that's great about Kuroko is that he feels an obligation to support his upperclassmen because his upperclassmen have been good to him. So playing for something bigger than yourself allows you to access just a deeper level of power. So it's great. I, I like this is setting a good example for the kids who are watching. The sneaky Kuroko. <laughs> He's already gone. Man, these are some smooth movements. Oh, that's a cool scene with the, the head of Tanaka overlaid. I'm just going to call him Tanaka because I don't know his name. Oh. That's like the Japanese surprise. Oh. Oh, a steal. I just love the way Kuroko passes, like chopping the ball. Maybe because Kuroko's been sitting on the bench, watching this whole time and studying them, and immediately adapting. Okay, so the whole team has been watching and studying them. Yeah, part of modern sports science is studying, studying a, an opponent's movements. Mm -hmm. Everyone has patterns that you can exploit. This reminds me of a really great clip I saw of Kobe Bryant, one of my favorite basketball players. He was so obsessive about studying the game that he just gave a small snippet. When someone does a pump fake, the way you can tell is they step back with their right foot if they're a right-handed shooter, and you can't shoot from that position. So when they pump fake, they're definitely not going to shoot, so you just got to step back and wait and then steal the ball because they're just going to try to drive past you. And for Kobe to point out that small of a detail just shows as to why he is one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And studying patterns, that is the way to get an edge on your opponent. You can't just always be faster and stronger than them, although that's important. But understanding your opponent and the patterns they have so you can predict what they're going to do next and use that to your advantage. But I wouldn't call this an ancient technique. The sleeping Japanese student. But it does take time to implement that, so that's why they aren't able to exploit it completely until later in the game when they finally can dial that in. Look at my arm as the the senior is kind of waving his arm across. That's really difficult to draw because each time it's a different length of arm. And the hand, it's not like reaching out. You see how the hand stays the same as I'm reaching out? He's going across. So not only does the hand look different at each perspective, but it actually gets bigger to show that. That was a great job animating that wave of the arm. Look at that. Ooh, little hook shot. This is good for Kagami too to know that his team can win without him. Oh, 
Oh, Michael jo Magic Johnson over the shoulder pass. No matter how good you are, just being on the bench is a very important experience. I'll probably talk about that more later. Oh, they're up by one now. 29 seconds left. How are they going to... Oh, that guy looks like a zombie charging. Oh, he just imposed his wheel. <laughs> Man. That's an interesting choice to play man defense when you've been doing so well with zone defense this whole time. Got a good screen. Is he gonna finish? Is he gonna chop it to the basket? Or alley oop it to him? Oh, Tanaka's in the way! Let's see, but Kuroko so calm. Oh, fake pass. You know he's going to do with the other arm. Oh, he does. That was sick. Misdirection. Game winning shot. Oh, man. He makes it a buzzer beater. We gotta watch that scene again. That okay. Okay, this whole time, there have been some exciting moments in Kuroko, but nothing that gave me goosebumps. This scene was the first scene in all of Kuroko so far that really gave me goosebumps. Just great movement, surprise factor, and just like telling the story to the very end of the buzzer beater. Let's watch it again. The miss. Fake of the pass. Like you think, oh no. Tanaka has finally got a read on him. And then the swipe of the ball. And then the music with that rising noise, that eerie noise. Let's see what the celebration looks like. What is Kagami's re I think he's processing, like, how is this short, weak guy the reason why they won? And so fitting that the upperclassman was the one that finished the game. That's what happens when you underestimate your opponent. Like, how could this be? Because it's the quality of the work, not just how long you work. Mm -hmm. Why? The strong don't win. The winners are stronger. To accept that reality. By the way, it's okay to be pissed off that you lost. Now he wants to know his name. Now that character, the bald head guy, has an extra level of motivation knowing that he wants to beat somebody. They still got another game. Still a great win. Damn, 113. Shutoku.
So Shotoku, okay, that's the the team with the green guy that doesn't miss. That has the superstitious doll. Now it's time for our lunchtime crunch time from our video sponsors, Sakurako and Tokyo Treat. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box. You will get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time, like Sakura Pepsi, Japanese Sake Kit Kats, Ramen, and many more. Every month I always look forward to trying the unique flavored Kit Kats from the Tokyo Treat boxes and this month we got banana. Never ever ever had banana flavored Kit Kats. Oh, banana caramel. Got some English this time. If you like caramel and banana obviously, definitely gonna like this one. The banana hits you first, and then there's more of a subtle caramel finish. And then still that nice chocolate crunch, that signature for Kit Kats. Now I thought I'd cleanse my palate with some wasabi. I think that's a wasabi root. Something a little saltier. Oh, it's a cracker. Toasted rice cracker, maybe laced with wasabi. Ooh, that is great. It's actually a little sweet, got a nice toasted flavor. And a very subtle hint of wasabi at the end. Man, I wish they came with a couple of these. This is so yummy. And now we get to wash it down with a drink that comes in every box. And I think this is the Sakura Pepsi, cherry flavored. But another reason why I love these boxes is because every month it's a different Kit Kat, and it's a different flavored drink. We'll get that whiff, whiff of fruitiness right away. Pretty much exactly what I expected. A hint of cherry with some very nice carbonation going up through my nose. Great drink to wash down the snacks. Sakurako is a monthly authentic Japanese snack subscription box. Sakurako is supporting local Japanese snack makers. Each box comes with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks including Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware. The Sakurako boxes often come with mochi, and this one is the squishiest thing I found in the box, so I think this is the mochi. Beautiful packaging as always. Ooh, it is. Maybe this is just a sweet bread. Not sure, but it smells so good. I don't think this is mochi, but this is hella good. Wash down with some Pepsi. Man, it's so good I forgot to describe the taste. It's just like a super soft, melts in your mouth, milky sweet bread with a little bit of honey, I, I think. That's, I can't describe it, it was yummy. I do not know what this is, but it's hard, feels crunchy, and I like crunchy things, but don't know if it's gonna be sweet or salty. Woo, that one flew out. Let's smell it first. Okay, it smells like a variation of a rice cracker, but I don't know what that, that little fish eye is. Mmm, it's like a fluffier type of rice cracker. All right, I've been on hunt for some mochi, so this is the next squishiest thing I found. I think this is it. I, I can't get over the packaging. It's always so nice, beautiful, clean, simple. I think this is it. Ooh, yeah. Mmm, it's got a great mochi rice flavor. Fresh, chewy. The texture is so consistent throughout the whole thing. And I know all the Sakurako boxes come with a really nice tea. So these are meant to be eaten with tea, but I just eat them straight. But the tea definitely elevates it to another level. Spring is almost over in Japan, but you can still get a taste of the Sakura season from the comfort of your home. This month, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. are inviting you to join in on the Yozakura experience, which is the Japanese tradition of viewing cherry blossoms at night. The beautifully designed cherry blossom box contains exclusive and seasonal snacks 
that won't be available once spring is over. Indulge in the unique flavors of Hana Warabimochi, Sakura Ame, and Sakura Sweet Potato from Sakura Co. And treat yourself to Piccolo Sakura Matcha and Sakura Cherry Buche from Tokyo Treat. The Yozakura experience is the perfect way to celebrate the end of spring and immerse yourself in the beauty of the Sakura season. But time is running out, so order your box now before it's too late. Just for the Sakura season, they are offering a special discount code Hinami that is linked in the description box below, where if you use that code, you'll get bonus items in addition to your regular Sakura code box. Or you can use my regular discount code for both boxes and get $5 off your first monthly subscription. You can purchase it to enjoy the snacks by yourself while watching these reaction videos with me, or it's a great gift for a friend and a great way to support the channel. That's interesting. Why would you add it? What was the the point of that scene of him just opening his mouth? All right, we got you know we got to enjoy these illustrations here. The texture of the towel. You see how the towel doesn't have any hard lines like the jacket, just to show the softness of it. And then the tape on the left, the little curved lines to show this the the individual wrapping of the tape. So you know that it's a whole roll of tape. Love those details there. Dang, amino acid supplement at the high school level. I like it. Okay, yeah, Kagami's got to be wasted, but the good thing he didn't play that game. Like maybe just some deep rest, not necessarily taking a nap. I don't advise taking a nap, by the way. Actually, that depends on the person. I've coached some players where they end up taking a nap and they feel refreshed, but majority of athletes end up feeling really groggy going into the next game. Bathroom talk, of course. If I had a period of prediction, they'll probably lose this one. It'll be exciting, but Goroko's been doing too well. Hey, I like his haircut. It reminds me of mine. That was cool. It is time. Eyes open. I'm surprised the guy in the green hair is even this worried, but maybe after watching that one loss. Alright, animation trick. Look at his glasses here. It's not really an animation trick, but you, a good animator will illustrate or animate something without you knowing how weird it is. So you look at the glasses. If you, usually for most, or in reality, the rim of the glasses the frame goes completely connected to the glasses, right? That's how it can function functionally stay on your head. <laughs> There's no glass that ex no glasses that exist where it just has the frame cuts off and then you just wear that. It kind of defeats the purpose if it can hold itself on your bridge. So why do they have that gap there? So you can still see the eyes, because eyes tell story, eyes give personality. So if you had the frame go all the way across the eye, you couldn't really see what he's thinking based on his eyes, because look how concerned his eyes look. But I'm not sure if anybody noticed that. Shooting. 
練習も手を抜いたことはない左手の爪のケアもいつも通り今日の占い神様一ああ、そう、everything's aligned ラッキーアイテムはのしがらき焼きも持ってきているバッシュの紐は右から結んだ人事は尽くした行くかはいおっせえよ先輩たち This should be a good game, but did they study video of Shitoku? So now they have a head start because they don't, they're, they're not going to underestimate them like the other team. That's the one benefit of watching other teams while you're off. That's a great analogy. Is that the senior? This is a very honest pre game. Is this a championship match already? Oh, but Kagami is fresh. He's hard to read. This guy kind of reminds me of Tsuki from Haikyuu. Gotta fix the glasses as always. Kuroko does not yell, he just speaks very matter of factly. And that somehow that upset <laughs> the guy in the green hair saying we will not lose. The championship game. Oh, oh. oh, the fact that I did not expect that coming from the green haired guy for him to give Kuroko so much respect, but also to appreciate the impact that Kuroko had. Even though Kagami is a more skilled and physical player, I think he saw how reckless, not a great game that Kagami played in the previous, previous match. But Kagami, he is a self-learning machine. So he's going to play with a lot more control this game. <laughs> he just doesn't like it that people talk back to him. Man, everyone looks even extra more buff. Yeah, how are they? What's their game plan? <laughs> what does taking them by storm mean? Ooh, Ali, you with the chop pass. Oh, did not expect the block. Maybe he's been studying them too. Oh, 
<laughs> Trash talking during the game. I love it. Like, get that, get that ish out of here. Behind the back pass. Oh. Okay, this is pretty a uh, closely contested game, right from the get go. Wow, it's almost been two minutes and nobody scored. Now we have the, the educational part. They should have put this explanation earlier in the in the season. Curious what their reaction is going to be when they finally score the first point. Damn, this is some great movement patterns. Oh no, they're going to give him the sharpshooter open shot. Deep three. Just like Steph Curry. Oh, he knows. Walking away. Oh, because he's going to pass the full court right away. Kuroko's going to grab it and then. like that chop it chop pass all the way full court double spin pass alley-oop all the way oh sick another futuristic glass scene there you go I like that response Good thinking by Kuroko. Yeah, he's not strong, but he's smart and he's a great passer. Another signature anime sound. Alright, this, this probably might have been my favorite episode so far. It's been a, a pretty slow progression, but the animation was on point, just like the perspective, the movements, the fluidity, and the basketball action. It wasn't just like a bunch of slam dunks. I felt like the first couple episodes was just slam dunk after slam dunk, and then a couple cool passes, but this was some really creative basketball storytelling. So I hope it only gets better from this point on.